my friends and my dear students welcome back once again for my class today let us learn something very amazing and that is close packing in crystals friends we all know that a crystalline solid is made up of a large number of constituent particles isn't it now let us see how these particles are actually packed in a crystal okay in order to understand the packing of these particles in a crystal let us assume these particles to be hard spheres of same size okay do you know something in fact the packing of uh, particles will be more efficient only when the particles occupy the maximum space available and if at all there is any empty space left out it should be very less then only the crystal will have maximum density such a packing is actually called as close packing fine the entire three dimensional structure of a crystal can be built by actually packing these particles in three steps okay that is number 1 packing happens in one dimension number 2 packing happens in two dimensions and the third step is packing happens in all the three dimensions so friends now let us take up each and every step and study in detail fine okay friends now let us take up the first step that is packing in one dimension here packing can happen in a single dimension in only one possible way let us take a look look here can you see the particles are arranged in a single row that is in one dimension yes and every particle is in contact with two other neighboring particles isn't it therefore in this packing the coordination number of each particle is 2 but what is this coordination number yes coordination number refers to number of nearest neighbors of a particle okay yes friends we just now saw the packing in one dimension so now let us see how packing happens in two dimensions okay already we have a single row of close packed spheres in one dimension right now in order to get a two dimensional close packed structure many such rows have to be stacked over each other so in how many possible ways this stacking can happen can it happen in one way or many different ways yes friends this stacking happens in two different ways let us look at these ways taking one after another right okay now let us look at the first way of stacking fine right? look here we have the first row of close packed spheres isn't it now let us build many more rows over this first row for that what should we do let us bring the second row of spheres and place it on the first row can you see here the spheres of the first row and the spheres of the second row are placed exactly one above the other yes that means here the spheres are aligned both vertically and horizontally isn't it let us now call the first row as a type as you can see here the second row is exactly similar to first row therefore let us call the second row also as a type so friends in a similar fashion if many such rows are built over each other then we get an arrangement like this let us call this arrangement as a a a type okay and in this arrangement if you observe very carefully each sphere is in contact with four neighboring spheres isn't it that means the coordination number here is 4 right but now let us join the centers of all these four neighboring spheres let's see what we'll get look we got a perfect square isn't it therefore such a packing is called as square close packing fine okay friends let us see how stacking can take place in the second way now right look we already have the first row of spheres here now let us stack the second row of spheres over this first row for that let us place the second row of spheres over this first row of spheres 
in such a way that the spheres of the second row are placed in the depressions of the first row. Okay, now let us call the first row of spheres as A type. And you can see here the second row is different from the first row, isn't it? Therefore, let us call the second row as B type. Okay, now in a similar way, let us place the third row of spheres over the second row. Right? Yes, now look, the third row of spheres is placed over the second row. Can you see? And now the third row of spheres is aligning with the first row of spheres, isn't it? Therefore, the third row is also A type. Now, friends, in a similar way, once again, let us place the fourth row of spheres over the third row. Okay? Look now, the fourth row and the second row of spheres are aligning with each other. That means fourth row is B type. Therefore, friends, such an arrangement is rightly called as AB, AB type of arrangement. Okay? If you carefully observe here, every sphere is in contact with six neighboring spheres, isn't it? Therefore, the coordination number here must be six. Now, let us join the centers of all these six neighboring spheres. Can you see a regular hexagon there? Yes. Therefore, such a type of packing is actually called as two-dimensional hexagonal close packing. Okay. Okay, friends. Now, let us take a look at both square close packing and hexagonal close packing. Let's compare both these now. Yeah, if you observe both these arrangements, can you see some uh, empty spaces between the layers? Yes, such empty spaces are in fact called as voids. Okay, and look at these empty spaces. Here in square close packing, the empty spaces are more, isn't it? Whereas in hexagonal close packing, the empty spaces are less. And if you look at these voids, they are triangular in shape. Until now, we have seen how packing can take place in one dimension and two dimensions, isn't it? Now, let us see how packing can be done in all the three dimensions. Do you know all real structures are three dimensional structures? And to get such a three dimensional close packed structure, okay, let us take the layers obtained by two dimensional close packing, okay, and stack them one over the other. But once again, here too, the stacking can be done in two different ways, right? That is, either by taking a square close packed layer or hexagonal close packed layer, okay? Okay, friends, to begin with, let us see how three dimensional close packing can be done by taking two dimensional square close packed layers, okay? Look, we already have the first layer here. Now, let us place the second layer over this first layer in such a way that the spheres of the second layer are placed exactly above the spheres of the first layer. Can you see? The spheres of both the layers are perfectly aligned both the vertically and horizontally. Yes. Now, let us go on building this by placing many such layers one above the other in a similar way. Now, now, we got a regular pattern, isn't it? In this arrangement, if I call the first layer as A type, and since all the other layers are of same type, we can call such an arrangement as A, A, A type, isn't it? Carefully look here, my dear. Every sphere is in contact with six other neighboring spheres, isn't it? Look at this sphere. It is surrounded by six neighboring spheres, isn't it? Four from the same layer, one sphere is present in the layer above it, and one more sphere is present in the layer below it. Hence, here the coordination number is six. Okay. If you carefully observe the entire arrangement once again, don't you think it has generated a simple cubic lattice? And we know its unit cell is primitive cubic unit cell, isn't it? Okay, friends, now let us see. How three dimensional close packing can be done by taking two dimensional hexagonal close packed layers. Okay, look here, we already have the first layer, isn't it? And let us call this as A type. Okay, and can you see it has a triangular voids? 
Fine. Now let us place the second layer over this first layer in such a way that the spheres of the second layer are placed in the depressions of the first layer. Can you see the spheres of both the layers are not aligned with each other? And the second layer is quite different from the first layer. Therefore, we'll call the second layer as B type. Okay. Just carefully observe this arrangement, my dear friends. Can you see at some places the triangular voids are covered by the spheres of the second layer? And this generates a new type of void called as tetrahedral void, denoted by the symbol T. It is called a tetrahedral void because if you join the centers of its four surrounding spheres, you get a regular tetrahedron, isn't it? But friends, if you look at some other places, we get different type of void. Let's see what it is. Look at this place here. Can you see the triangular void of the second layer is placed exactly above the triangular void of the first layer. But however, their triangular shapes are not overlapping. Isn't it? Look, the apex of one triangular void is pointing upwards and the apex of the other void is pointing downwards. Therefore, here we get the new type of void called as octahedral void, denoted by the symbol O. It is called an octahedral void because if we join the centers of its six surrounding spheres, we get a regular octahedron here. So, friends, we have seen both tetrahedral voids and octahedral voids at different places. But uh, how many of these voids are present? How many tetrahedral voids and how many octahedral voids? Isn't it? In fact, the number of voids present depends on the number of close packed spheres. Okay? We'll deal about their relationship in uh, our next topic. Don't you worry right now. Let us continue with our packing. Okay. Okay, friends. Now let us place the third layer over the second layer. But hold on, friends. Before placing, we should think about the different possible ways of stacking, isn't it? Here, the third layer can be placed over the second layer in two different ways. One way is by covering all the tetrahedral voids of the second layer. The second way is by covering the octahedral voids of the second layer. So now let us take up the first way, okay? That is by covering all the tetrahedral voids, right? For that, let us bring the third layer of spheres and place it over the second layer now, okay? In such a way that all the tetrahedral voids are covered. Can you see? All the voids are covered, isn't it? Tetrahedral voids. Fine. But friends, as you can see here, the spheres of the third layer are exactly aligned with the spheres of the first layer, isn't it? That means third layer is also of the A type. So, here as the pattern of spheres is repeated in alternate layers, we can call such a pattern as AB, AB type of pattern. Okay, and due to this arrangement, the structure we got now is actually called as hexagonal close pack structure HCP in short. Okay. If you carefully observe this HCP structure, can you see each sphere is in contact with 12 other neighboring spheres? Yes. Six spheres are in the same layer, three spheres are from the top layer and three more spheres are from the bottom layer. Hence, the coordination number here is 12, isn't it? Do you know such an arrangement of atoms is mostly found in certain metals like uh, magnesium, zinc, etc. Now let us look at the second way, that is by covering the octahedral voids. Fine. For that, let us place the third layer of spheres over the second layer in such a way that all the octahedral voids get covered. Can you see? Yes. But if you carefully observe, the spheres of the third layer are not aligned with either the spheres of the second layer or with the spheres of the first layer, isn't it? Therefore, friends, this third layer is neither of the A type nor of the B type. So, let's call it as C type now. Okay, let's see what happens when we place a fourth layer. Shall we? 
Now let us place the fourth layer of spheres over the third layer. Can you see now the spheres of the fourth layer are exactly aligned with the spheres of the first layer? That means the fourth layer is of A type now. So, as you can see, the arrangement here is giving a pattern in such a way that ABC, ABC layers are repeated. Therefore, such a pattern is called as ABC, ABC type of pattern. And such an arrangement leads to a structure called as cubic close packed structure, CCP in short, or we can call it as face centered cubic structure that is FCC. If you carefully observe in the CCP structure also, the coordination number is 12 because look, each sphere is in contact with 12 other neighboring spheres, isn't it? Six are in the same layer, three from the top layer, and three once again from the bottom layer. Therefore, coordination number even in CCP is 12 once again. And such a type of arrangement of atoms can be seen in certain metals like copper, silver, etc. The first question is What is the coordination number? In a square close packed structure in two dimensions. This question is actually present in NCRT in text series, that is question number 1.14. Also, it is there in NCRT exemplar. So, two places this question has appeared. Okay. It's a very important question, rather. And the four options are 2, 3, 4, 6. Can you directly take the answer? Yeah, you can if you remember. Square close packed structure. And uh, the clue is actually square. Therefore, it is 4, but still, if you recall, guys, in two dimensional uh, close packing, hmm, one way of packing is yes, the rows of uh, the spheres okay, are built one above the other in such a way that the spheres of the second row will be placed exactly touching the spheres of the first row. Do you remember? Or shall I draw for you quickly? See if you have. Okay, now you have, let us say, there is a first row of spheres. One, two, all should touch each other. Please excuse me, guys. I can't draw a perfect sphere throughout. I'm trying my best. Now, if you place the second row, right, the second row should be placed in such a way that they touch the spheres of the first row, right, in this way. And the third row to show, just to differentiate, I'm drawing the colors. I'm, I'm drawing in different colors rather. So look here. All are touching each other, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't this in two dimensions now? Definitely, yes. There's one dimension, there's the next dimension. So as I said, these spheres are touching each other and they're placed one above the other, exactly one above the other. That means they are in perfect alignment both horizontally and vertically. So, if you consider one particular sphere, let us say this sphere now. Isn't this touching four other spheres? Look here. One, two, three, four. If you actually join the centers of these four spheres, what do you get? You get a perfect square. Right? That's why it's called square close packed structure in two dimensions. And since each sphere is in contact with four other neighboring spheres, four such neighboring spheres, the coordination number is four. Okay. If you know the answer, you, you can directly go and take it. No problem. But to make you recall with a picture, I had to take a little time to draw. That's it. Okay. So we have this question in this particular topic. But uh, you can try some more questions. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye.